Hi, I'm Lou with another episode of My Car Story, and today's a special feature. We're out at Carlisle, Pennsylvania, at the Carlisle events at the Chrysler Nationals. Now, before we get to the Chrysler Nationals, and you're going to see some videos on those, I've got my good friend Lance Miller with me. Lance is one of the co-owners of Carlisle Events, and today we're taking a little trip down memory lane. We're going not only through his father's collection, which was uh, Chip Miller, and there's a Chip Miller, tell, tell them about the Chip Miller organization. What is it, chipmiller.org? Sure. It's Chip Miller Amyloidosis Foundation. So you can check it out at chipmiller.org. His father passed away of amyloidosis, and uh, um, you know there's a foundation for that, but we're seeing some of his cars that they had, and we're gonna see some of the cars in detail. So let me grab that right there. Lance, always a pleasure seeing you. Hey, and, it's great to be and seen. We're, we're right in your, uh, right in the heart of your uh, car, car garage, is what I'm trying to say. I'm stunned because let's take a look at one at a time. What do we have right here? This number three Corvette. What year is this? This is a 1960 Corvette, but better yet, this is pretty much the pinnacle of our car collection. This, this one. Is, yes. This is uh, this was one of the Briggs Cunningham Le Mans Corvettes. So this is the very first Corvette to ever win its class at Le Mans in 1960 with John Fitch and Bob Grossman at the wheel. Really? The cool part is you got to check out the movie The Quest. The and Quest. That's the movie that I handed you earlier. All right. So I'm going to check that out. Others can check that out. Can we pop the hood real quick? I'm going to have to charge you a fee, but we'll do it now. <laughs> wow. Fuel injected. Yeah, yeah, it's a cool car. Kevin McKay did the restoration on this car. It took a long time, but again, the movie, The Quest, will give you all the details. All the details. We took this car back to Le Mans 50 years, 50 years later with John Fitch at the wheel going around the track. How cool At the is age that? of 92 years old. At the age of 92, a spry 92. And I got to sit in the passenger seat, which was awesome. So The Quest did capture that, and uh, it's definitely worth checking out that documentary. Wow. And then the, the uh, do you have any questions about that well, one? Well, now we've got the pinnacle car. Everything yeah. else is kind of downhill so from we'll here. So we'll just run through the rest. But, All but, right. uh, so now, okay, the obvious question is, so how did you come up with the car that was the Le Mans car? I mean, look at the exhaust. you got to watch the movie. Okay. All right. Honestly, it's a long story, but it's a great story, and they captured it so well. A gentleman by the name of Michael Brown did the... the documentary and he did a phenomenal job okay and the interior and the roll cage we're obviously because of time not going to start them all so let me go to the next one which is above sure every car has a story this is a Corvette challenge car it's number 65 obviously uh, love these cars because it was a two-year only series they started in 88 and 89 was the final year for the Corvette Challenge Series. Uh, essentially why the Challenge Series even came about was because Corvettes were literally spanking Porsches, Lotus, and so forth. All the competition bitched so much that they kicked them out of the series, so they decided, let's start the Corvette Challenge Series. And a gentleman by the name of John Powell was the one that started it from Canada. And uh, they dangled a million dollar carrot for the award, so they got a lot of great drivers. <laughs> um, so this particular car was driven by Bobby Carradine. Did you ever see Revenge of the Nerds? That sure. movie. Well, Bobby Carradine was the lead nerd in that in that uh, my movie. My wife, my wife might argue that that I was the lead nerd, but <laughs> there you go. Me. I, I want to, uh, uh, and I'm going to take a look up. I'm going to walk up that stairwell, and I'll show some of these cars from the top. Sure. All right. So we'll get to that one. We're going to stay kind of on the ground, go up and down. Okay. So what do we have here? This is actually, I told you, I love the challenge cars. They only made so many of them. And in 1989, there were 20, I think it was 29. I'd have to double check that, but you know, there weren't many produced and converted. They were all to be exactly the same. So it was all about your driving ability. Mm -hmm. This was the winning car. So this was the championship winner driven by Bill Cooper and uh, Valley Chevrolet from Wilkes-Barre, actually a local friend of, of mine, uh, Kenny Wallace was the, the team owner. So it's a car that we very much track, cherish, and uh, it's just cool because it's the championship car, the best one of, of the series, I believe. The winning car. This is it, yep. The Mark III winning car. We will do one of Lance's cars separately in a review, but I just wanted to show you the jaw-dropping honest of his garage. 
If you haven't jaw dropped already, and by the way, of course you get the little baby Corvettes. Ah, uh, yeah. Oh, well, my dad was a big advocate of getting children involved, so each time my sisters or myself would have a kid, they would get a uh, car. So that's kind of neat. There uh, you go. Just to adapt them to be in a car kid. <laughs> in a car kid. All right, so we've got the black one here. What's the black one? The black one, again, is another challenge car, and this particular car was one of two that was never raced. It was considered a backup car. And probably one of the most cherished cars in this collection for me because my dad and I would split each mile. Unfortunately, my, pa my dad passed in 2004 from amyloidosis. So uh, nevertheless, you know, I cherish the mo memories and moments that we had together. And this car brings back a lot of those memories. Mm, special car. Yep. So it's uh, pretty well perfect, you know, unmolested, uncrashed challenge car, which is rare. One of two, obviously. Oh, one of two, yeah. And then all the wonderful, I'll call it Corvettabilia behind yeah. me. All right, we're, we're now walking into this car. And this car kind of caught my attention. You might recognize that number. And if you're paying attention, that number is whose car? That is Dale Earnhardt. Dale Earnhardt, the Intimidator. I was intimidated just standing next to the car. There you go. Look at the wing on this. Now, this car, correct me if I'm wrong, was you were sharing with me. Go ahead. I'll let you. I don't want to spoil anything. Hey, no worries. Yeah, this is, uh, this is the last time that Dale Earnhardt survived a race in a car was this car. Unfortunately, we all know what happened later, a couple weeks later, is that he passed in his NASCAR. So this is a very significant car for two different reasons. The reason I just mentioned, secondly, um, due to the fact that he ran with his son, yeah. uh, you know, for a father-son team to run together is really special. Obviously, I had a serious bond with my dad and my mom, and, uh, you know, this car is special in that sense. My dad was all about trying to get it because of the father-son relationship and the provenance of it, uh, you know, as it being a Pratt Miller and Chevrolet car. That's unbelievable it's me speaking of unbelievable we've got two little hellraisers behind us and what do you have here well this is a car i fell in love i mentioned earlier about the cunningham car going back to le mans 2010 for sure. his 50th anniversary when i went back to le mans 2010 of course you're going to fall in love with cars and people well, i really fell in love with this car this is a uh, ford gt it's considered a maytech competition car it ran GT1 that year, so I'm there cheering for Corvette, but at the same time, I was cheering for this car. And this car was kicking butt for eight hours of the race, literally just destroying the competition. Unfortunately, it got a hit by an LMP2 car and got taken out, but nevertheless, I fell in love with the look of this thing and knew one day I had to own it. So I went after it and I went after it hard, and fortunately, I secured it. So we, we got it from Mark Vanderstraat in Nerver in uh, Belgium. And uh, we happened, in, uh, a friend of mine, Greg Bomey, uh, just said that he'd be partners so we could buy all four of the remaining cars. So <laughs> you're going to see two here today. And here's the one. Th this car, <clears throat> we did do a review on this car. So if you go to My Car Story with Lou and you go to Maytech Competition 2010, you can see this car. And we started for you. And it's the first time in my My Car Story career that I, I didn't think the police were coming. I was waiting for them to arrest us when we started this indoors at the Rosemont Convention Center. It was quite the experience as you watch the fiberglass back and move away from the exhaust coming out of this car. So this car for me and you, kind of our special car. Yeah, this is our special car. Us together. Let's go back up on top. What do we have up here now? Sure, this is another beautiful car restored by Kevin McKay, who I talked about earlier mm -hmm. with our Cunningham Corvette. <laughs> this is an LS6. It's a 71, just great car. I mean, if you can see the undercarriage up there, yeah, I, I'm, I'm too short, so. I'm you showing can. that. It's but just... it's literally perfect. Inside, outside, underneath, uh, an exact, you know, perfect, car so i'm excited to have this in our collection and that's a uh, beauty yeah. i will show this up top here's another one <laughs> this is a 63 split window just kind of stuffed in the middle here for grins and i'll show far enough back where you can get there's your there's your split window like so, just in case somebody's thinking it might be a 64. So, Lance, 
Tell me about this one, because it's not just a 63. Yeah, this car's beautiful. It's got, a, I believe it's 11,000 miles on the odometer. Original, I mean, literally, this car is perfect. My father, it was actually the last car that he these purchased. Are, these are original, original hash marks. Yep, the hash marks on there are all original. I mean, this car is unbelievable. The more I look at it, and the more I learn from the people that truly know these cars and teach me, the more I fall in love with that particular car. But it, it's, uh, it's the people that owned it were original owners. My dad bought it from them. So, I mean, they kept it and it was their baby. So now it's our baby. What's this one? This is number 17 challenge car. It's a great car. If you look in the brake area, we actually put in bigger brakes. We uh, adjusted the motor a little bit in this one. Uh, essentially, it's a bit of a cheater car. We, my dad and I would split time in this particular car and go and play on the track quite a bit. So uh, it's, a, it's a monster, it's fun. So we enjoy driving that one. It's a monster. I haven't had it out. It's fun. Long time. Yeah. All right. Let's move over to our last section. A Cortez Silver 69. Yep, 69. Again, this is an L89, so you're going to see a mammoth motor underneath here. And the 3 times 2 carburation. So, so this car again perfect. was restored by Kevin McKay. I mean this car is, uh, I mean it's unbelievable. It's such a nice example. And a true uh, side pipe car. Oh yeah, completely restored by Kevin. And uh, Corvette Repair, Valley Stream, New York. Sorry, I got lots of stuff loaded in there. Oh, that's great. I'm gonna jump in front, sorry. Well, we, we all the time, uh, you know, have this stuff anyway, so you gotta stick it somewhere, so why not stick it in the car? Exactly. And you can see the interior color as well. Okay. So let's, uh, let's go up top. Now, why this car? Why this, why this, car? Why this yellow, bright yellow, the banana Corvette? <laughs> it is a banana Corvette, you're right. And it's a ZR1. This is a 95 ZR1, and my parents, prior to me graduating, said, you know what, we'll buy you any car you want, spoiling me the daylights out of me. <laughs> but uh, I certainly didn't take it for granted at all. I'm very fortunate. You know, my, my dad was very passionate about cars, and he wanted to do this, and so did my mom. So I said, you know what, I love the 95 ZR1. Went for it, glad I did, and uh, eventually I have an eight-year-old daughter now. This will be her car someday when she graduates. That so is great. Hopefully that tradition continues. I want to, I want to be doing the my car story with her. This yeah. was my dad's car. Yeah, exactly. Okay, what do we have here? This is a 69 Corvette, and uh, this is a cool story. This was the first Corvette that my dad ever purchased new. <laughs> and uh, So this is where it all began? No, well, not really, because he, he was into cars way before that, and he had had other Corvettes. This was just new from the dealership, so it's... Uh, but that's a big day. It is, It was, and that's why he loved it. That story says it all, but in a nutshell, you know, he sold the car, and then he ended up buying it back many years later. I think it was 12 years later, and it only had 50 extra miles on the odometer, <laughs> and it was out in California. It was waiting for him. Yeah, so somebody else took good care of it. Tell me what this one is. Is this a 60? No, this is a 59, but 59. It's, a, it's a monster. I mean, an absolute monster. This thing's uh, you talk about blowing your eardrums on the Maytag. Really? Right? You gotta hear this thing. It's a ton of compression. Tom Lelinski Racing did the motor. Look at the size of that. And I mean, it's got a ton of compression. But this is a car that I vintage race today. I'll run SVRA. I'd like to make it out and make some HSR events as well. Um, so you put earplugs in when you run this one? Uh, yeah, little helmet, earplugs. It is, it's, it's really loud and it's got, it's, it makes you truly respect the guys that used to jump in these cars back in the day because they truly are the warriors. I mean, I, I learned that because quite frankly, this thing scares the daylights out of me. You go into a corner, you're hitting the brake and you're like, oh my gosh, is it gonna stop, you know? But ultimately it does, it slows down, but it's, it's a whole different deal than newer cars that we've been accustomed to driving and spoiled, quite frankly. Yeah. You get into something like this, you learn real quick the, to respect let's, the car. Let's pop the pins on this one just sure. for a moment. Yeah, like I said, it's uh, nowhere even close to original. But I this see, always I see been it's got the car. special Carlisle event sticker, so it's got yeah, a shameless plug. You know? Well, it's, it, you're, you're saying that it's going to be something special. That's what it says to me. There you go. It's a cool car. I mean, it really is. I just wow. It's cool. My dad had the car built through Tom Lelinski. 
and uh, he continued the build. He called me, in fact, a year later and said, you know, hey, I've got this car here at my shop. What do you want to do with it? And I, I honestly forgot that he had the car there. So I said, Tom, let's go racing. Yeah. So he got the car all set up and we went racing. We had a lot of fun in this car. And I plan on having a lot more memories made. That is awesome. Car Pro. What car do we Pro. Have well, my mom never asked for anything. And after Corvettes at Carlisle about two or three years ago, that's probably two years ago, she had said, you know, hey, check out the Patriotic Edition Corvette. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. And I never had time, never checked it out. But she showed me some pictures of it. In fact, they changed the name of it. I think it's Centennial Edition is what they called it finally. But they did call it the Patriotic Edition originally because of the stripes down the center. And the, and the star in the middle. Yep. She fell in love with this thing and had to have it. So we ended up So um, mom's car. Yep. Well, it's my mom's and I believe my sister's as well. So they're kind of tag team in this car, which is cool. That is cool. My sister loves the uh, Corvettes as well. In fact, George, the 69 that we want over, is my other sister someday, I'm sure. She'll, she loves that particular car. For some reason, she named it George, and I don't know the why. Which one? The, the orange one. The, the orange 69. one's George. Yeah. Uh, again, I'll walk up on top so you can see some of these a little better. What's this one? Uh, as you can tell, we love race cars. And for some reason, we didn't pick cars that were number three. They just ran as number three. Ironically, so this car is run by a really good friend of mine, Boris said. He's a, a great racer, but at the same time, this was the only twin turbo Callaway Corvette race car ever produced. So it's a special car. It's got its place in history. Uh, unfortunately, it didn't do very well in the race series due to the fact that it had so much horsepower, they put in so much ballast. So they put in a lot of weight to really slow it down. But that caused a lot of other issues with the turbo, <laughs> making it overheat. Uh, we put in weight to slow it down. Yeah, exactly. For a race car. All right, let me take one walk up top. Sure. All the great Corvette memorabilia around. You know, kind of feature some of the cars up top as we go up here. Okay, so here's the one that you've seen. There's our 454. Our Callaway. With the significant, what I call, double dents on the hood. The 63. 33. Lance's car out of college. Thanks for graduating college too. I'm sure your parents would agree with that. Yeah, no problem. And then and then we'll end with George. Lance, you're looking great down there. Hey, thanks. Lance, you've got a saying. What's that saying? Life is good. Thank you, Lance. Thanks for being on my car story. Thank you.